and welcome to my channel Rapid Vectors. In this tutorial, I will show you how to create a shader which causes a hit flash on the player when the enemy comes into contact. In a previous tutorial, I showed you how to create this health bar, so you may wish to view this first. And remember, if you like what you see, please click like and subscribe to receive updates of future tutorials. Now let's begin by creating a hit flash visual shader for our player. If we just open the player scene and then select animated sprite 2D and then scroll down until you get to the material section. In the material section, let's create a new shader material and then open that. And then in the shader, let's select new shader. And we don't want to create one in code. So for the type, we want to use visual shader to use the user interface. Then for the path, let's just rename this, save the shader and call it player hit flash shader. Save that. And then let's open that shader by clicking in here and it will take you to the shader editor. Let's just zoom in on our player sprite. And then I'll just temporarily turn off the collision shape so that we can see the sprite much better. Just zoom in a little bit more. When the enemy comes into contact with the player and applies damage, we would like to change the sprite colour to be red. So what we can do, we can create a shader which will affect the pixels and turn them red when the enemy hits the player. So in our visual shader, we have an option at the top called Vertex and Fragments. So Vertex allows us to change the UV, which is the X and Y coordinates of the pixels, and the fragment will allow us to change the pixels themselves so we can change the color of them. In this tutorial, we are not going to use vertex. So what we'll do, we'll leave this on fragment. Now in the output, we want to affect the color. So the first thing we'll do is let's add a new node. So you can do that by right clicking or you can click add node. Then search for color parameter. Click create on that. And for the color parameter, I'm going to call this hit color. I'll have that as a default value. And for the default value, I'd like a red color. So I'm going to go for something roughly as such. Okay. And then what I can do is I can link this color to our output. And as you can see, by doing that, I have now modified the pixels inside the sprite. The next node we need to add is a Boolean node. So let's click add node. And search for boolean and we'll choose boolean parameter and what we'll do we'll rename this parameter and call it enabled and this boolean parameter will be used to switch the hit flash on and off so let's just use a default value and for now i'm just going to hide this mini map so that we can see a little bit more of the shader screen now the boolean parameter cannot be linked to the output what we want to do is to use some if logic to say if the parameter is enabled then show the hit flash color and if it's not enabled then show the sprites normal color so let's add another node and search for if and under conditional functions we want this if method here so now that we've got this if method what we'd like to do is to first link it up to a so pass this to a the enabled parameter will pass either a zero or a one now when we are enabled we want to match against one so we'll say b is one and the logic will be when a equals b and then that is true then what we want to do is to assign the color so let's assign color to a equals b then we want the result to go to color so when a equals b then pass the color through to the output now, as we've made this connection, the sprite has turned black. And the reason is, is because we are not given an input for the original color of the sprite. But let me just show you something in the inspector first. These two parameters that we've now created can be modified through the inspector. So if we click enabled, you can see now that this Boolean parameter has passed a one down to the if statement and is creating a match and is now allowing the red color to pass through and go to color. So let's just turn it off. Now, when this is false, we want this sprite to have its original colors. So we can do that 
by having another node so click add node and then under input we want to put the original input in the original input for the animated sprite 2d is going to be its color and we can then just choose the option and then link this up to if a is greater than b and if a is less than b and as you can see now those conditions have all been met and we now have the original sprite and then if we go to our shader parameters and just switch on enabled and keep turning it on and off we want to create this desired effect by using an animation player we can trigger the enabled parameter by using an animation player so just go to player node add child node and search for animation player choose animation player and just create that let's just rename the animation player to be hit animation player and then select the animation player and go to new animation and call this hit this will then give us our track what we want to do is to go back to the animated sprite and attach this keyframe to the animation and as you can see by selecting the animated sprite 2d has given us the sprite frames tab so what we just need to do is with this node now selected is just select the animation tab here and then at this keyframe just click the key next to enabled and then say yes and create the reset track and you can see that the animated sprite 2d material and shader parameter enabled has now been added as our first keyframe so if we just click that and then on the value we want to turn this on and then move the keyframe to 0.2 so let's zoom in a little bit more select 0.2 and then we can add a new keyframe so right click at 0.2 and click insert key but at this frame we want to turn it off so this has now turned it off and then we want to limit the animation to end at 0.2 so in the seconds window here for the time window just click 0.2 and then what we can do we can play that so as you can see when the animation plays it's going to then turn on the shader so we are getting the hit flash now that we've created our hit flash shader and also the animation player let's now use this in the player script so select the player script and then scroll down to our on hurt body entered in this method we want to call the hit animation player and then play the hit animation so scroll to the top and let's then add this as an on ready variable so just click the hit animation player and then bring that into the script once the hit animation player is in the script scroll back down to the method and then after the print we can just say hit animation player and then play it now let's run the game as we run into the enemy we see we get a flash and then we lose a life so we have another flash and another life loss so that brings us to the end of this tutorial so we've created a shader that creates a hit flash effect when the enemy comes into contact with the player now that brings us to the end of this tutorial if you like what you've seen please remember to hit like or subscribe and receive notifications of releases for my next tutorials Thank you for watching.